From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. You know, when we come into your home, I have to present to you oftentimes things that are not very pleasant, but we want to reveal these things so that you know what's going on around the world. But today, I'm beginning this program with something good, and it delights my heart, friends. It really, really does. Good news from some parts of the world for Christians. Amen and amen, and we'll be explaining that in a moment. Now, this is not good news. Less than half of German Christians do not believe in heaven. I can't believe that. 50%? They don't believe in heaven? And 25% of British Christians do not believe in the resurrection. Well, we just had Easter. They celebrated, but they didn't believe in the real resurrection of our Savior. So we'll be dealing with that in just a moment. But I do want to say that my husband is very excited for us to uh, begin something that uh, will mean an enlargement to our ministry right here. The location of our ministry is going to uh, be enlarged in some ways, and we'll be telling you about that. And it's going to be kind of surprising. In fact, I said to Erin, one of our camera girls here, I said, Erin, uh, do you know what we're going to do? And I told her, and she said, what? Is that real? I said, oh, yes, it's real. And my husband's very excited about it, but he wants to be the one to tell you in detail about it. So when he comes back on TV, he'll be sharing with you. But our guest today is a very, very dear friend. I was telling someone that I'm interviewing a scientist, and certainly he is revered around the world for his scientific knowledge and for his museum uh, that's right just outside of Dallas, Texas that he has there. And uh, for all that he's accomplished, many, many digs around the world. He goes on them all the time, been to the Holy Land so many times I can't count them. And it is a great joy. He's a personal friend and how we thank God for Dr. Carl Baugh. Welcome back, Carl. Dr. Rick Sella, it's always a pleasure to be on this telecast. Uh, throughout America and around the world where I travel, very often people step up to me and say, I saw you on the Jack Van Impey Presents program. <laughs> Half the people in the country must be watching your program. <laughs> it's a joy to be back with you. Thank you so much. Well, we pray that as they watch, they're blessed, or even many of them accept Christ yes. as their personal Savior. But right up front, Remember I said I have good news from some parts of the world where Christians are really being blessed. Now, our guest today just got back from a trip to Fiji. And I want him to explain to you, first of all, what Fiji used to be and what Fiji is now. What a difference. I didn't realize there were people on earth like they used to be. But now... Praise the Lord when the Lord comes into a heart, and they're having great revival there. When the Lord comes into a heart, he changes them. And uh, my, I couldn't get over it, Carl, what you brought back and revealed to us happening there now. But would you mind telling the people what they used well, to be? I'll be very pleased to give this brief report. I can't get over it. 150 years ago, Fiji, which is the opposite spot of the globe from Jerusalem, Fiji, 150 years ago, was the cannibal capital of the world. One man, Undre Undre, a fabled chieftain, ate 999 of his own people. Oh. He's listed among the four most wicked men who ever lived. Yet the missionaries came in, and those early missionaries paid a great price. Uh, some of them, like Methodist missionary John Hunt, gave his life, was consumed by consumption. Many gave their lives. But over a period of time, they were able to give the gospel message with power. And it's the Word of God that breaks the heart of stone. And the Word of God broke their hearts. And that generation of people ultimately 
truly got saved. Mm. So that Fiji, Dr. Rexella, became Christianized. Right. But now the next generation grew up in Christian homes, assuming they were Christians, the next generation. Five generations have now passed, and in the public schools, they actually sing Christian songs. They actually memorize John 3.16. They actually are taught the truths of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ Wonderful. in the public school system. But the problem is this. They have not learned that it isn't enough just to be born or instructed in a Christian home or a Christian family. We have to personally recognize that we are sinners and personally receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. Now, what I'm telling you, as briefly as I can, is a fulfillment of prophecy. This is a program of prophecy. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 4 states, The isle shall wait for thy law. Waiting is a passive context expecting a result. I took a creation scientist with me recently. We had the privilege of lecturing in 35 public schools. Wonderful. And they encouraged us not only to lecture, but to present the facts of the life, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, and to pray with the students. We lectured to over 16,000 public school students and had the privilege of hearing over 13,000 of them pray audibly oh. receiving Jesus Christ as their Savior. Oh. Now, while in America Wonderful. and in Europe, mainline denominations are compromising, are losing their faith, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. In Fiji, I'm happy to say that those mainline denominations still hold to the veracity of the Word of God, the inspiration of Scripture, the literal death, literal burial, literal resurrection, literal second coming of Jesus Christ. And many of them watch Jack Van Ippy presents. Oh, my heart is so thrilled, Dr. Baugh, that uh, the Lord has really converted uh, all of Fiji, actually, and uh, that uh, the people are open to the gospel there Well, now. yes, there are uh, about a million citizens, a million inhabitants of Fiji. We had the privilege in the last few years of distributing 400,000 King James Bibles. Oh. Every student and every teacher in the nation now has a King James Bible. And it's made such a difference that while I was there just a few weeks ago, the missionaries informed me that Papua New Guinea was having problem with their young people accosting people on the streets. Right. So they turned to Fiji and they saw the difference that has been made. And they then requested that our group distribute to all of their students and teachers a King James Bible like is used here on Jack Van Impey Presents. And they have enshrined in Papua New Guinea, they have enshrined as the official book of the nation of PNG, the King James Bible. And they've enshrined it in the Capitol Halls, the official book of the nation. The power is in the Word of God. Faith cometh oh, by yes. hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Oh, yes. Amen. I tell you, that really thrills my heart. Uh, Dr. Ball mentioned something right up front, that they uh, had heard about the story, and that, but they hadn't received Christ as their Savior. Something went through my mind. God gives a gift. He's opening the world, and He gives a gift to them called salvation. But you have to receive it before yes. it's yours. If anybody offers you a gift, you have to say, oh, thank you. You mean this is for me? I can have this? Yes. I open my arms to it and receive it. But this whole nation of Fiji and Nanu Guinea opening their arms and accepting Christ and all these Bibles and people opening their heart. 13,000, is that what you said, accepted we, Christ? Uh, my associate and I, actually led over 13,000 oh. of these students and teachers with the permission of the school system to receive Jesus Christ. Just before we arrived in Fiji, headline news showed that a number of the Fijian Christians themselves had gone into remote areas where they practiced 
uh, demonism, and it actually destroyed some of the demonic idols and vessels used, and that made headlines around the world. Yes. So these people, the whole point is they're waiting for the truth of the Word of God. Isaiah 42, 4 states clearly, the isle shall wait for thy law. And the context shows this is in the last days. Dr. Excella, Jesus Christ is coming. Amen. And this is one of the slight yeah. indications that matter here and throughout eternity. You know, when I told my husband about all of this, and you were uh, talking to him on the telephone, I've never heard him rejoice more because of the Word of God being given out and responded to the Word of God and people accepting Christ. I, had, I was so happy to open our program today with the joy of this good news. Thank God for what's happening. Well, we not only were able to give them the Word of God and salvation, but we were also give them, able to give them an instruction booklet, an illustration of daily devotionals pointing to creation and the gospel. And we're now uh, making plans to present one of these devotional booklets to every student and teacher in the entire nation of Fiji and Papua New Guinea, because we're responsible to disciple and follow up as much as possible. Oh, amen, amen. Well, let's praise the Lord for those people and for what's happening in Fiji. But I'm sorry to say that there are Christians around the world who are not responding uh, to uh, what's happening. And if they respond, they really pay a price. I'd like to show you this first picture here. We just finished having Easter not long ago, Easter 2017 Christians. Now look at this. The most persecuted group in the world. My, oh my, after hearing that good news, Australian wearing cross beaten by Muslim gang, and then going on quickly, Spectator Egypt's Palm Sunday massacre was attack on Christianity. ISIS claims responsibility for Egyptian church bombings. Well, we all know those two churches were, uh, Coptic churches uh, really lost everything that they had there, and so many people killed and wounded. ISIS threatens more attack against Egypt's Christians, they don't care how many they kill. And then the Coptic churches in Egypt cancel Easter celebrations, mourning Palm Sunday bombings. And the Archbishop of Washington, nearly one Christian killed every hour for practicing faith. Well, you know, I just received something that really moved my heart. It's a book. The top 50 countries in the world persecuting Christians. You know who number one is? It shocked me. North Korea. North Korea. Well, they are classified, you know, as an atheistic, non-believing country. But then right down the line, we have Iraq and Iran, seven and eight. And, you know, it's amazing how many people. You know who number four was on here? Pakistan. Couldn't believe the most persecuted Christians in the world, in those countries. It hurts my heart to to see this, but knowing that those Christians are with the Lord, they've given their lives. How wonderful that is, Dr. Bob. Yes. Uh, prophecy is winding up. We have known for some time, as Dr. Van Impey has announced on this program, uh, that we're in the last days, but prophecy is now winding up and the scroll is becoming more tense all along. Some 30 years ago, a personal friend of mine, Dr. Jack Baskin, was invited in Korea. He was in South Korea. They had 200,000 North Korean soldiers that were captured. But rather than massacre them because the South Koreans were docile and humane in their activity, rather than massacre them, they simply had them listen to a chaplain. Dr. Jack Baskin was selected because he knew the language and has a great compassion. He's a personal friend. He went to each of these concentration camps, one after another after another. And when he told me that he spoke to literally 200,000 in a captive audience, yes, concentration camp, these were captured North Korean soldiers. Mm -hmm. I said, preacher, how many of them openly received Jesus Christ? And he said, all of them. Oh. 200,000 received Jesus Christ. 
When the Holy Spirit is at work and when there is the opportunity to clearly present the gospel, people who are desperate recognize their desperation is deeper than the outward circumstances they're in and they receive Jesus Christ. But these soldiers were then turned back to go to their homeland ultimately and I assume, Dr. Rexella, that some of these are among yes. those who have been martyred for the sake of their precious Lord. Amen. You know, which leads me to something that really I know you know all about, and that is how much Jack Van Impey loves the Word of God. He's been known for his prophecy and for his love of the Word. He's the walking Bible, actually. And uh, I'm so happy that we could put together our new wonderful offer for you, the prophetic voice of Dr. Jack Van Impey, and I'd like for you to see right now the, the new promo that we have for you. I love it because it sort of shows what's happening. There he is, handsome young man, isn't he? My, oh, my. Uh, no wonder I fell in love with him. Look at him. Now, uh, that was uh, not too long before I met him. He was behind the pulpit when I first heard of him and heard what a great preacher he was. And my, oh my, it blessed my heart so much. And there he is preaching to about 10,000 people. Oh my, yes. And uh, in his office right here at our international headquarters. And uh, how wonderful it has been for us together to get the news around the world. The prophetic voice of Dr. Jack Van Impey. And my, oh my, I'm so happy that we produced this because Jack answers some questions on here that are probably going through your mind. Is perse persecution coming for the Christians in North America? Will we see that here? And could we see peace on earth today? That's a big question. Or is this world headed toward the worst war in history? Now, he quotes the Bible. He gives God's word. No doubt about it. He answers all those questions and so much more. So don't put it off. There's the 800 number. And there's the address. So please make the call right away. The prophetic voice of Jack Van Hippie, all from the Bible. Now, oh my, I do want to put him on right now because he had so much to say. Uh, before he left uh, because of his illness about the lack of faith of many people around the world, even now. Please take a look at what he had to say. Oh, folks, what is wrong with these ministers today? Don't they know the first commandment? Thou shall have no other gods before me. None, none. There's 1,600 cults out there right now, and every one of them denies Jesus. You're not going to get to heaven that way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man can come unto the Father but by me. Let's go a little farther. Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved, and that name is Jesus and when he comes back and sets up his kingdom on earth, Philippians 2.10 says, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And if you don't do that now, you'll never do it then. You'll miss heaven. Let's get into the book. Matthew 7.21 this is Jesus speaking. He says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and your name done many wonderful works? It says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. He's talking to the ministers. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Oh, but you talked the language and said the prayers, but you didn't have it. I never knew you. Never, never. I know my sheep. I know them. They follow me. Oh, yes. Isn't that wonderful? They follow him. But so many today not only don't follow him, they don't believe all of what Jesus had to say. Can you believe they call themselves Christians? Take a look at this first headline. It really, really surprised me. A quarter of British Christians do not believe in the resurrection. Now, this is a survey. Now, they're, they're talking about the resurrection even of Jesus. 
How could he be the son of God if he said, I'm going to rise again, and he didn't rise? Going on, less than half of German Christians believe in heaven. One half of them say, I don't believe in heaven or hell. My oh my, among Catholics that dropped to 40%, and among historic Protestants, it was as low as 32%. 32%. My oh my, we must believe everything that Jesus had to say. He was the Son of God. He was Savior of the world. He did die on the cross. He did rise again, and he is coming back again. We must believe all that. Is that correct, Dr. Ball? Absolutely. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Thessalonians that there would come a time when there would be a great falling away at the end times. And then he wrote to Timothy that there would be a time when even Christians, many Christians, would have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. And the ultimate power is, it was expressed in Jesus in the resurrection defeating death. What an awesome spectacle. But for Christians not to embrace this indicates they really don't know the Lord and indicates another thing, that the Bible is absolutely true, that the falling away is now occurring, that we are literally wrapped up in the arms and the embracement of this wicked situation. But what a time to declare the truth of the Word of God and what a time to make sure that we know that we have Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Mm. You know, Dr. Bob is surprised at this next article I'm going to show because, um, you know, the Muslims uh, truly believe in their religion, which is a different Jesus altogether. Yes. It is not our Jesus. But uh, they don't care what Christians have to say that uh, defame Christianity. They don't care about that, but they care about if we say something about their religion. Take a look. Muslims once blasphemers prosecuted worldwide. They've gone before the United Nations, but only, only if they say something about their religion. Terror attack as truck drives into Stockholm crowd. Now, here they are. They're, they're wanting to get their religion out there, and they say, we'll do what we have to do, the attack in France. Islamic State claims responsibility three days before an election. Oh, my. And there, Islamic State claims Paris attack that killed policemen. And again, they're focusing on Paris shooting. Gunman was focus of anti-terror probe. My, oh my, how we need to be praying that God will help our Christians to really show their faith and will help those who are per being persecuted to realize the Lord is going to reward them one day. And um, we need to be praying for what's happening in Europe right now, Dr. Bach. Yes, Europe is leading the world in compromise, a spiritual compromise and economic fragility. We are living in perilous times, not only from the religious scene, but the economic scene, the global scene of government. And again, all of this is forecast in the Word of God. So Christians, we need to be praying. And actually there is a parallel to this ploy of Satan to get uh, Christians and Jews, but Christians especially because we believe that Jesus Christ is the only way, and He is the only way. There is no other way. No one else is able to offer any other way. So Christians are targeted because we have hope, and that hope is in Jesus Christ. So we want to encourage you on this program to know Jesus Christ personally. Yes. And you know, I'm glad you brought up something there, Dr. Ba, and that is Israel. Uh, will you stay with me for another program? I want to focus a little bit more on Israel and what's happening there because the Christian ethics are Judeo-Christian and yes, how we need to be praying for those in Israel being persecuted also. Next I'll week. I'll be happy to stay because we can't turn this loose. It is too vital. It is too central an issue. Israel is God's special timepiece and the illustration of His concern. I'll be happy to stay over. Amen. Thank you so much. And I just want to say that have you ever opened your heart to the Lord? You know, week after week, I say this to you, and maybe you have accepted the Lord because of the program. I've received thousands of letters saying, yes, we've opened our heart to the Lord. Please keep them coming. It blesses us all, still very, very much. But if you haven't accepted the Lord, I want to say again, 
Will you open your heart? I'm going to be asking Dr. Baugh in a moment to pray that prayer that says, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. We all are. I've done things wrong. So have you. There's not one perfect person on earth. We need the Lord to cleanse us, and only his blood can cleanse us. Lord, I believe you're the Savior of the world, and I accept you into my heart. Will you pray that prayer as Dr. Baugh leads us right now? The prayer of accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Dr. Baugh. Perhaps you've had a violent life, and in that life you thought there was no hope, God wouldn't care for you. The Apostle Paul said, I was the chief of sinners, and he proved it, but yet he got saved gloriously. Or perhaps like those dear ones waiting in the aisle, just waiting for his law, wanting someone to leave them in prayer. Either way, perhaps you grew up in a home with a Christian testimony. Either way, whatever, you need personally to know and receive Jesus Christ. You see, he died for us, the spotless Lamb of God. He was buried and he arose from the dead victoriously. He is alive and he wants to enter your heart. He said, Behold, I stand at your heart's door and knock. If any man, any individual will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. Will you simply pray this prayer with me right now? Just from your heart, just pray, Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know Jesus Christ died for me. I know he was buried and he arose from the dead. And right now, I sense him knocking at my heart's door. Lord Jesus, come in right now and save me. And I will live for you with all my heart. Jesus said, he would then sup with you, that is, come home to live with you. Welcome home. Amen. Did you just pray that prayer? There's my address. I'd love to hear from you and send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. You're walking a new way now. Praise the Lord. And now I'd like for you to uh, listen to our announcers. He tells you how you can receive the prophetic voice of Dr. Jack Benipe. Chuck. Thank you, Rex Ella, my friend, to order the prophetic voice of Dr. Jack Vanipe. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanipe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NIA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. Don't put it off. There is the 800 number and there's the address. So make the call right away. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. You need to have this. You really, really do answer all your questions about the future, where we're going. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. There are many ways to worship God, but there's only one God to worship. We look forward to being your home again next week. Until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.